Hey y'all, how y'all doing? Um, of course, y'all see my location and I'm gonna jump into what's been going on with me. I've been MIA for a reason. The turn of events in my life has been significant in a downward spiral. Spiral, which is crazy. Um, so right now we are currently homeless. And I mean that, meaning homeless, homeless. I'm at the storage unit. This is my car. That's my daughter. You guys just saw. But it has been, it's been a journey, as my life has always been such a journey. And it's amazing because this book is in continuation. And no matter how much I've been trying to, great curses these curses are significant and it's very hard to do uh, I think it it's up to me and my children in order to break these curses I don't have any family that I can go to because I don't associate nor do I affiliate with them and reasons being is that when I was staying with you know what, whatever, whatever. It's just, I'm tired of everyone else. And I just need me, that's it. When it's me and my life and my children, well, just me, you know, it, things tend to go the way you know they're supposed to go though at this point I'm disabled and it's hard as shit so I do get you know workers compensation every two weeks which is not enough uh, a income stopped with my daughter my oldest daughter she was getting SSI but in January that stopped and also in January we were facing homelessness and I was able to get an agency that helped save us. Though within that, I had to sign a stipulation in where I was living to say that, hey, you know, I'm gonna be paying this rent on time and paying these attorney fees. And for the first two months, two and a half months, I was doing what I was supposed to and with that loss of income, that drastically changed everything and everything just went to shits. Then y'all know my dad um, ended up passing away in the day of his funeral. Well, two days before his funeral, I, I spoke with my landlord and I let her know that I would be giving her a payment and she said it was okay. She said that she would accept it and then I let her know that my dad had passed and you know his funeral would be that Friday and she was like oh I'm sorry to hear that you know and then come Friday we're getting ready for the funeral and then I hear this knock on the door I'm like damn it sounds like the police and I open the door and sure enough sheriff's department handed me a 24 hour notice to vacate my apartment and then he explained to me the procedures and he said, don't just not do anything, you know, uh, go down to the courthouse and ask for some type of stay, temporary stay or a little time. And it's what I did. Be well, after that, I went ahead and went to my dad's service. And after the service, I went to the courthouse and and um, asked for a temporary stay in which they responded. Um, the judge's secretary, hold the judge's secretary uh, let me know that the sheriff's department wouldn't be out until Tuesday. So I didn't have any money at the 
<laughs> nothing. I had nothing. Uh, I did have merchandise, so I went and returned what I could and what I had the receipt for. And that got us enough money to where I got a U-Haul. And I was just packing the U-Haul as deep as I can. That only gave me, what, $109 returning stuff back. And I hadn't even had a storage unit. And that was on a, a Monday when I got the U-Haul. And then that Tuesday, you know, me and my children trying to hurry up and get everything out. And, um... Well, the sheriff's department came around uh, 11 and before they came, my uh, the landlord came and she was like, oh, I didn't know, but because of the stipulation, she was like, I didn't know, you know, what was going on. And then the maintenance man told me that you were gonna be served, which makes no sense because you're the landlord, so you already know. And she was like, if you need time, you know, five o'clock, I'll um, give you more time to get your stuff out. You think, you know, and if you need more time, then I'll give you more time. And I was like, okay, thank you. You know, have to be real cordial and in a very sensitive situation. So I'm doing a lot of prayer and I swallowed my pride and I, I, I was going to call the storage unit and ask them if, um, because I had no money. I was gonna let them know that, hey, you know, when I get some money, I'll pay you guys for a storage unit. But right now I really, can, can you help me? So before I did that, I went online and I seen that they had a special uh, first month you rent for a dollar. And so that came up to what, $36 and some change. And um, I asked uh, my brother to borrow $36. And uh, he let me borrow it. I, I gave him back 40. Um, you guys probably are thinking, if you ask your brother, you know, maybe he would let you stay with him. And, and that's, right now, that is something that I'm going to keep within myself because I know whatever I post, they be watching. But I'm going to keep my reserve and, you know, just go about my way because sometimes that's the best thing that you can do. But anyways, it's been a walk. It has been a journey. And now today is July 1st, and I'm in a, a stage of depression. Though I've been in, in depression before, and I've been in the depressive state for a while, though it's becoming more pressure, and I'm always being referred back to myself to figure things out. <sighs> Y'all, this has been incredibly hard. And with my injury, I had a, um, a mediation, so to speak, Thursday, which didn't turn out anything, being lowballed by my own fucking attorney and being doubted by my own attorney in which I have Morgan and Morgan, which is fucking insane. And it, I, I just, I'll deal with that situation come next week. To where it's, it's crazy. And, and then me hearing the conversation of my representatives of my job 
and listening to their conversation and what they're saying about me and laughing and as if I'm a crazy person or some shit. And they're getting mad at my doctor because he's doing exactly what he's supposed to be doing even though he's a workers compensation doctor. He's doing his job. All of these other people are trying to just throw me off on being crazy because they're getting paid by the insurance company because they get referred back more patients. So I'm going through it. This has been some shit, but I'm still standing, you know, as much as I possibly can. Yesterday, I was like, you know what? Me and the girls just put on our bathing suits and we just went to the beach and just, it was so beautiful and trans, just trying to clear our minds and just trying to keep calm of the situation. And this is a situation. It is very much a situation. I've been in contact with 211 and basically you be referred to a circle, a cycle, you know? It's just crazy. It's really crazy. I'm frustrated. I make sure, you know, we have food to eat as much as we can. I've been going to food pantries. And I still have my car payment to make. Which they put me on repossession yesterday. And I was able to basically beg for an extension so they said okay um it has to be automatically deducted out of your bank account for a day a certain day and i was like okay it's been a time and nothing has been I just, as much as I can, I'm keeping myself together. This shit is hard, though. But I'm keeping myself together, because what else do I have? What else do I have? You know, God has always been journeying the hell out of my life. And I promised God a long time ago I would not try to unalive myself. And I promised God that whatever he put in front of me, and I, I made this promise when I was nine. I said, no matter what you put in front of me, I'm going to walk through it. And that's what I have been doing. This is not the first time I've been homeless. But we were able to receive help, you know. Then, right now, we haven't gotten any help. And this is the first time I've spoken out public about what's going on. Still got my dreams, though. I, I still love creating baskets. Before we got evicted, um, I took a few days, like two days, and made as many baskets as I could, which is not a lot, because I'm like, you know, I can't do much. I am certainly in a situation. I wish I could work. My kids are stressing too. My 18 year old, she's 18, of course. Uh, I was able to go down to the free clinic and my kids say that, you know, they wanted to work and at least help out. So being homeless in uh, St. Pete qualifies you for a free ID. So I was able to obtain paperwork, you know, 
that gives us access to them giving getting their ID. So we go next week. Um after the fourth of course because you don't have to have an appointment you can just walk in like as pre-covid and get your id that way so that's what we're going to be doing thank god i had these wigs child wigs and hairspray Trust me, it was not looking like this. But I still gotta have some kind of something about myself because everything else is gone. Leaving. I get um very little child support and I'd be waiting for it to hit just so I could put gas in the car. Everything is just shit right now. And I'm trying to hold on as best I can but I want to keep my YouTube page I don't want to just leave y'all in the dark of anything because I love crafting and creating that brings me my peace you know I don't have anything else right now and I've been missing y'all like crazy and I've been wanting to say something But, um, that's it. That is it. Oh, I've been managing. At first, uh, I would spend money on, you know, the 36 bottles of, of drinking water, you know, and um, using it to bathe. I feel so lightheaded. Anyways, y'all, maybe maybe that's as far as I should go. Cause I feel lightheaded as hell. I feel like I'm a pastor. I feel like I'm a pass out. Trying to keep myself together and my spirits as high as I can, yo. Maybe I need to eat something. I haven't eaten anything this morning. I have, um, like, I have $8 on my cash app card and then I have like $3 on my child support card and that's it and I'm gonna put that in the car for gas and um for food I'm gonna have to figure this one out I'm gonna have to figure this one out but I feel crazy it's food right now I'm trying to maintain oh also I had to go to the ER for my damn tooth, which, y'all, it has, this has been a journey. Like I said, God has been journeying the shit out of my life. I don't know why I choose me, but. It's crazy. Anyways. I don't want to make this video too long. And everything I have is in this storage unit and in this car. It's amazing. It is amazing. My life is in a storage unit and in a car. This has been some shit. But I'm holding on. Oh, I'm hanging in now. Anyways, I'll talk to y'all later.